Hello everyone in EPSY382. My name is Sunny Kim. I'm an assistant professor in special education. It's my great pleasure to be in your class as a guest speaker. Dr. Sarai and I have done several research together and we are really good co-worker, colleague, as well as good friends in the field. So I am very happy to be in your class Dr. Sarai is teaching. Talking about myself briefly, I am a researcher in the field of early childhood special education. I know this class is about family and collaboration between home, school, and community. So I am going to talk about how family are involved in the, uh, in the special education process. Especially we will talk about IEP process and how to work with families throughout the IEP process from educators perspective. IEP in the field of special education is really critical um, for school lives of students with disability because the students with disability will work toward the IEP goal set for the academic year. So family involvement in this process also become a crucial part and actually family involvement is required by law and national policies such as IDEA. So today in this lecture, we are going to talk about um, family involvement in IEP process. Let's get started. So in this lecture, we are going to learn about IEP process, individual education program for children with disability. Each child with disability at school has an IEP, their own individualized educational plan. And the students with disabilities work toward their IEP goals throughout the school year. Therefore, IEP for students with disabilities are really important concept and IEPs involve with lots of different stakeholders such as teachers, school personnel, parents, even legal advocates and the students with disabilities. The Education Law IDEA Individuals with Disability Education Act mandates parents' involvement in IEP process to ensure that the interests of students with disability are represented and to allow parents to have a voice in their children's education. So we will talk about how to involve fa uh, family and students in creating IEPs. We will also briefly talk about some strategies that promote parents' involvement and review some issues that should be considered when making important decisions for children with disability like uh, placement, educational goals, assistive technology, assessment process, special education services, and transition. So I believe some of you are already familiar with IEP and IEP process, but many of you may not uh, be familiar with IEP. So to give you an idea about what IEP is and how to process um, IEP, I want to briefly talk about this concept first and we'll move on to the next concept. So we are going to watch a short video clip talking about IEP and IEP process. An IEP stands for Individualized Education Program. You'll hear people talk about IEP in different ways. There's IEP teams, there's IEP meetings, and the IEP stands for that plan itself. It puts into place what's called specialized instruction, which can be help in the general education classroom. It can be small group instruction. It can be one-to-one -one instruction. It can even be outside the classroom to help your child get the skills he needs to be able to work in the general education classroom. But sometimes it can be as simple as something called accommodations. And those accommodations are simple changes to the way things are being taught in the environment to help your child get there better. So for example, a child who needs glasses, a child who needs eyeglasses needs those eyeglasses to see better. A child who needs accommodations might just need a change in, in the where he's sitting, or he may need a change in the way the information's presented. For example, he may not do well with verbal directions, but if the teacher provides them in written form, it may be more helpful to him. There are also related services that can be put into place, things like occupational therapy, physical therapy, counseling services. Those are all related services that help your child meet the goals that are put into place by his specialized instruction. The IP plan has goals. 
it has services, it talks about your child's strengths and his needs, and it has what's called a present level of performance, and the present level of performance talks about how your child's doing now. And all the other pieces fit together with how your child's doing now. The goals talk about how we're going to put those services into place to make sure that your child is moving forward to make sure he's getting the same free, appropriate public education as other children his age. If you have an IEP, the federal law is very clear about who needs to be on that team. The parents are a very important part of the team. You have as much expertise about your child as you can bring to the table, and that's specified that you're part of that team. A general education teacher, an administrator, so the principal of the school or the special education director, a special education teacher, and anyone else who might be part of your child's team, a school psychologist, an occupational therapist, or a physical therapist are all supposed to be part of this team by law. Key takeaways. IEP stands for Individualized Education Program. An IEP involves specialized instruction, which can take place inside or outside the classroom. IEPs can also include related services, such as occupational therapy or counseling. So each state in the United States provide their own state IEP form and Illinois also has Illinois IEP form. So if you click the link you see um, here, you can download the empty form and also instructions. So instruction is easy to follow. So when you have to create new IEP, you can download the form and the instruction so you can compare your form and instruction as you create an IEP for your student with disability. So the process of IEP starts from developing an IEP for a student. Again, IEP is an individualized process. So you are going to develop one IEP for one student with disability. Developing an IEP involves more than holding an IEP meeting. To develop an IEP for a student with disability, so many people should be involved. And through developing an IEP and having a meeting with different stakeholders for the student with disability, you, teacher, will better get to know about your student with disability. Therefore, teacher must be aware um, of details for IEP process. Let's think about what to do as an educator before, during, and after IEP meeting. To prepare for the meeting, teacher can uh, gather information about student. Teacher can review existing data, for example, previous IEPs or current assessment data to make sure that information necessary for making decisions, making educational decision is available and current. And teacher can contact parents and teacher can encourage family to invite advocates to the IEP meeting, such as legal advocates, grandparents, or friends. Teacher give notice of the meeting, confirm the um, attendance, who's going to come to the meeting. Then the teacher developed a IEP draft. Okay, during the meeting, usually special educator or special education director opens the meeting by affirming a child's, uh, the child's strength and accomplishments. So they highlight the student's positive aspects and uh, the teacher need to solicit inputs from families because it's required by law. And teacher need to be careful not to talk down to family members or to talk above parents' understanding. Teacher need to listen and reflect parents' input. And teacher uh, treat parents as key decision maker because parents are an important um, partner in this IEP meeting and IEP process and other education process as well. When making decisions about services like uh, speech, speech therapy, occupational therapy, or physical therapy, um, they need to consider family routine resources and availability because a, uh, the family, the parents may have multiple kids at home, so they may be really busy for other things as well. So um, the teacher need to consider family routine resources and availability as well. 
after the meeting, the teacher can make changes to the draft IP and they finalize the IP. Uh, once they have final version of IP, they provide all attendees with copies of the IP with parental permission so they can, teacher can email the copy to the meeting attendees. And of course, the teacher keep uh, tracking students progress toward IP goals throughout the school years. During IP meeting, so many important decisions are made for the student that affect the student's education. For example, uh, decisions about placement, goals, assistive technologies, related services such as physical therapy, occupational therapy, or speech therapy, and assessment procedures and transition. Let's talk about placement first. Placement is especially very important issue for parents and students with disability. Although students have right for FAPE, free and appropriate public education in the LRE, least restrictive environment, placing children in LRE, the inclusive setting, is not always a straightforward choice. Um, because, for example, the student's academic level is too low, low in some subject, for example, math or reading. So the student can better learn with special educator in one-on-one -on -one setting with uh, in the student's individualized level. Or the student may have uh, severe behavioral issues so possibly harm other children in the classroom. In that case, for safety issues, better inclusive idea should be discussed. discussed. So during IEP meeting, the inclusion or appropriate in inclusive practice for the particular child should be discussed. Setting IEP goals during IEP meeting is a huge part as a student will work toward the IEP goal set for the academic year. Including family value before um, setting an IEP goals is now required by law. So teachers can send out a form including these three questions. You see the three questions? So parents can fill out the form or teacher can have a short phone, phone conversation before the IEP meeting to figure out the family value on these three questions. So uh, during the rear IEP meeting, teacher can think about some ways to support each of parents' points described in the form or uh, during the phone call. During the meeting, the team will decide if the student will need to use assistive technology or not. So assistive technology means any item, piece of equipment, or product that is used to increase, maintain, or improve the functional capabilities of children with disability by IDEA, the law. Uh, technically, we said there are two different types of technologies, high tech or low tech. So if you see, the, as you see the picture at the bottom, um, these days we use uh, iPad with touch tap at on it a lot. So you see that students using the iPads uh, and the touch chat, touch chat app. So if you look at the app, uh, once you start the app, you will see different word buttons. So student can make a sentence or a phrase um, to communicate. So as you, as the student press the button, uh, the machine, the device will says the uh, corresponding word for uh, the student. So student can communicate through this communication app. And you're seeing two examples of low tech. The first one you're seeing in the left side, that is called Big Mac. So teacher or student um, can record their voice over to this machine. So for example, uh, teacher can record, I need a break. And then you will teach your student who needs this device to communicate to use this device. So whenever the student needs a break, the student will press the button and the machine will say that sentence for the students. So usually we use this for nonverbal students. Um, and 
the right side that is called PEX before we have iChat, I mean touch chat on our iPad. We use this uh, device a lot. So PEX uh, stands for Picture Exchange Communication System, P-E-C-S. So student can move the picture card to the bottom to make a sentence. Uh, the student want to communicate. So I need a break or I need to go to restroom. So the student can communicate through this picture. So those are the example, two examples of uh, low tech. And during IP meeting, the IP team member will team member will decide if the student will need assistive technology if uh, the student needs one what will be the uh, one that will fit the student's needs so they will discuss uh, the needs of assistive technology what type of assistive technology the student will need during the IP meeting when deciding what services to be provided, parents' routine and schedule, and availability of transportation should be considered. And to go to next grade level, all students must take some exam and pass the exam. Although the promotion exam have both pros and cons for children with disability, the children with disability also should be well prepared for the exam so they can be in an age appropriate or developmentally appropriate program with other children. Parents should be informed about the exam or test during IEP meeting and what kinds of accommodations or modifications in learning for the exam or test will be given at school and what to do at home. Planning IEPs for students with disability is an individualized process. So all decisions made for the student should reflect the needs of the student and the current developmental level of the student. For young children with disabilities, parents will be the person, people who know the child the best in terms of the child's background, preference, and home culture. So we are going to make special effort to embed parents' input before developing an IEP for the child. You see the figure. This figure is a checklist uh, educators can use to assess whether they provide opportunities for um, parents or family to contribute to the IEP process. So a teacher can self-check the teacher's effort or behavior to include families into IEP process by asking these questions. Uh, for example, did the parents receive written notice of the scheduled IEP meeting at least 10 days in advance? Did educators explain procedural guidelines, uh, safeguards to the family? Did parents give their written consent for assessment? So um, those, are, those are the example questions teacher can uh, use for self-checking. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to contact me via email at sunnykim at uic.edu. Thank you for your time. Have a great day.